Hello, I got a big tail <laughs> wagging in front of the, the camera. Got Stanley here and Lucy here. Lucy is, I don't think she, she can be seen right now. Stanley's in the way. She's such a sweetheart. She came bounding out the door when I got here. She was so happy to see me after having to deal with a vacuum cleaner today because today was the day the house got cleaned. She always, you know, she used to not be this way, but now she's like, she wants to go with me well, when Deborah's here clean, cleaning, and I don't really understand why, except it must be the sound of the vacuum or something, but that scares her. But she must enjoy it some because Stanley stays in the cage the whole time. Brings back memories. You know, now I'm not even putting Stanley in the cage at night. Though last night, this is what I was afraid of, about 12.30 or so. I hear Stanley go out the door, the dog door, and start barking at something. I have no idea. Maybe it was somebody who was doing something bad and needed to be barked at. Probably it was a squirrel or something. Anyway, so I always worry about the neighbors and what they'll think. And so I, and also he didn't come in for a minute. I was like, where was so worried that maybe he escaped? But he did, I got up and just as I was getting to the door to open it to see what, where he was, he came through the dog door and then I closed the dog door and he was stuck inside the rest of the night. But he doesn't bark when he's inside, usually, unless he's barking at Lucy for eating, chewing on some piece of rawhide that he wants or some other infraction that he is accusing her of. Anyway. Stanley. He's a good boy, mostly. We didn't get our walk this morning because, um, well, I had to clean up for the cleaning ladies. <laughs> um, I guess that's that. Maybe it's time for me to put you outside so I can get the reading done. You don't seem too excited about that. Here comes Lucy again. Okay, let's go. Can we go outside or can we stay inside? Why don't you just stay in? Maybe you can come over here and get seen. <laughs> yeah, there's Lucy. Here she is. She's such a sweet girl. <laughs> okay, our reading today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. Oh, no one anything, except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I find it interesting. This is twice now, and I shouldn't have known this before. Maybe I just never noticed it before. I've read all this before, of course. But, um, you know, he's, he's saying to love your neighbor. He said it in Galatians. He said it here um, without, without the, the first commandment. Love God with all your um, heart, soul, mind, and being, um, and strength. Um, which makes me think, which is what I've said, and I, I'm not, I'm not, none of this thought is original to me, I'm sure, but you know, if you're written, you know, so Jesus said, love, love God with your entire being. And, and he was, he was quoting the Old Testament. So it's not, not even original to Jesus, but love God with your entire being. Oh, but also you have to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And it's like, well, how can you love God with all your, how can you love your neighbor if you have to love God with all your being? It's like, well, loving your neighbor must be how you love God. That's my interpretation. It's also interesting that those two commandments of love from the Old Testament are not together. One, I should know this, is that I think the love of the Lord your God and it doesn't have mind in it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, I believe, 
is is I believe Deuteronomy and the love your neighbors your love yourself is Leviticus so anyway though as Paul said you know he, he listed the, um, the some of the Ten Commandments don't commit adultery don't don't kill you know don't murder that's you know both Exodus and Deuteronomy so anyway and that is love your neighbor as you love yourself here is our reading for um, Tuesday of week 32 the level of duty we saw yesterday that we as moral beings cannot live on the level of instinct without trouble to ourselves and all those around us when we try it we are trying to live against the grain of the moral universe. It's a losing battle. So we see this and move up to a higher level, the level of duty. More law is introduced and we decide to obey it. So religion is now the doing of our duty. This obviously is a higher level of life. And most Christians try to live on that level. We go to church, we pray, we give to good causes and strive to, to live a good moral life. What else? This is taken for granted as the level on which we should live, but it is a very unsatisfactory level. We are constantly whipping up the will, striving to be good, pushing ourselves to square with the religion of duty. But that leaves a lot of people depleted spiritually and physically. Instead of religions relieving the strain of human living, it is simply one more area of drive and tension. A man introduced his wife to me saying, my wife is one of your wrestling Christians. And you could see that she was a wrestling Christian, wrestling hard to be good, her face tense and anxious and strained. She was so preoccupied with being good that she had little time for leisured good to those around her. Hers was an unattractive piety, non-contagious. People come after me after an address and say, thank you very much for that address. I'll try harder. I always answer, don't. For when you are trying harder, you are on the basis of yourself. You are the center. Your religion is self-centered, self-centered effort, therefore on the wrong center. God is the center, not you. In a religion of duty, God is reference, not resource. We do our duty to God and do not draw our resources for living from God. God is on the margin of our trying. We are the sweating center. We try not only to earn our living by the sweat of our brow, but to earn our eternal life by the sweat of our brow. Good stuff here. I think that's what a lot of us suffer from. Here's our prayer for today. Oh, Father, help me not to push too hard at the gates of life, for I know that, that it is not my pushing but your offer that is the basis of my finding eternal life. Help me to open my hands and take your gift. In Jesus' name, amen. And our affirmation for the day, not the lashings of duty, but the longings of love shall be my spring of action. Jesus is Lord.